In this video, we're going to talk about polar coordinates for complex numbers. So in college algebra or pre-calculus or pre-college algebra, whatever the hell they call it nowadays, now you think of the plane, R2, typically using rectangular coordinates like x and y. So you're doing stuff like y equals x squared, graph and stuff like that, or functions, or y equals f of x, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, if one way to think about this point, x comma y, we call this a rectangular coordinate, and how I think about it is, that is like the corner of some rectangle, where I use the origin as one of my points, and then my point is you know, on the side across from that. Anyway, another way to say that, I run over x units on the x-axis and up y units on the y-axis, and ta-da, I'm at my point. Okay, that's stuff that we all know and love. Then, you took a trigonometry class, at least I'm assuming you did since you're thinking about complex analysis right now. And so in trigonometry, you think about the plane using different coordinates called r and you know, maybe theta, depending on what book you use. I'm gonna use phi here, so r and phi. And they're defined using your rectangular coordinates x and y in the following way. x is the same thing as r times cosine of phi y is the same thing as r times sine of phi. So if you're still around because you're not annoyed by me saying phi instead of phi, I kind of don't know my rhyme or reason for saying phi versus phi. All I know is um, if you say phi or phi, you know, we can still be friends. I'm not some kind of a phi or phi bigot. You say it how you need to, how you want to, how you learned it. I'm probably going to say phi for most of this video though. Anyway, so there's my picture about the relationship between the two. And so what do polar coordinates allow me to do? Instead of thinking about that point x comma y as being, you know, some corner of some rectangle and rectangular coordinates, now I can think of it as being on some circle of radius r. And you just tell me how many radians I need to rotate in order to, uh, to get to that point on the circle. So phi is some kind of uh, angle of rotation from the x-axis, and r represents, again, the radius of the circle. And if you allow me to zoom in for a moment, you see how r, that radius, it's just the square root of x squared plus y squared. And so I see that, ah, oh, that's just the distance from that point to zero, so that's the radius. Cool. Okay, so some notes about this. Again, still no complex numbers yet, just talking about stuff from the plane. Some notes about this, only the origin has a radius of zero. So when I think about polar coordinates for the origin, uh, I'm just gonna put zero, zero has a radius of zero. Uh, otherwise, a point should always have a positive radius. Uh, what else? If x, y is represented by r phi, then x, y could also be represented by r phi plus two k pi. So like there are many, 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 infinitely many ways that we could represent a point in rectangular coordinates, we could represent it in polar coordinates, right? We could always just add some even multiple of pi and we, we, we land at the same spot. And just so you can kind of visualize what's going on, let me go ahead and grab a new color here. When I add an even multiple of pi, let's say I added two pi, right? That just, uh, that just makes me rotate around the circle one more time. So like you get some kind of winding around the circle and I know I'm going in the counterclockwise direction here. But when I add two pi times my, or plus my angle, I see I just end at the same point. And so again, there's lots of ways that you could uh, write polar coordinates down for a given rectangular point. All right, so again, some things to notice. The radius is just the square root of x squared plus y squared. And uh, that angle, if you think about um, uh, tangent of phi, tangent is what? Opposite over adjacent. And if you look at that triangle I got in there, the opposite, the side opposite of phi is y, and the side adjacent to phi is x. So of course, tangent of phi is y over x. So that's another connection between uh, my two sets of coordinates, rectangular coordinates and rectangular coordinates. I think I just said rectangular twice. Rectangular coordinates and polar coordinates. All right, so what's the connection to these complex numbers? What are we going to do now? And if you manage to get through the other videos I've made so far, it's been about how a lot of what we do with complex numbers, the idea comes from stuff I know how to do on the plane. We're just relabeling it x plus i, y instead of x comma y. And, uh, you know, why fix what's not broken? So if z is equal to x plus i, y in rectangular form, you can guess what its polar form is. It's going to be r cosine of phi plus i r sine of phi. I just plugged in what I know as far as polar coordinates go, where how x relates to r and phi and how y relates to r and phi. Now here's the only thing that I'm gonna do a little bit differently. I see that both of these terms have an r, and let's factor it out. So we're typically gonna write this as r times the quantity, cosine of phi plus i sine of phi. Here are some common notations because that is a lot to write down for the polar coordinates of a complex number. Now. So here are some other notations for the polar coordinates of a complex number. Now the first one looks very odd. R times 
e, like where the heck does e come from? e to the i phi. And the second one is you know, also mysterious, but at least there's not an e in there. It's r times cis of phi. CIS kind of stands for cosine I sine is what it's really short for. And you kind of see like, oh yeah, there's cosine I sine. Like that's what it's trying to say. Anyway, what we're gonna use most often is probably this number one. Again, the, the one you should be ultra suspicious of because I just threw an E out of nowhere. For right now, I just want you to accept what I'm implying here. And the implication with this notation is that somehow E to the I phi is cosine of phi plus I sine of phi. In no way have I motivated that. It is just for you to accept as a symbol for the moment, but it does turn out to be true. So that's called creating suspense for you to keep watching like future videos. So we're gonna talk about what is the complex exponential function. And then there's also ways to think about this with like a power series. If you, if you suspend disbelief, the power series will work for complex inputs too. It's very cool how this stuff is all very consistent. But for now, just black box, just accept it. E to the I phi is cosine of phi plus I sine of phi. All right, so then just so we're all crystal clear, I'm saying that, all right, the slick way to write polar coordinates for a complex number would be just say r e to the i phi. So that's the same point up there all I'm trying to get across. All right, so we've got some things to talk about. So r, you could probably imagine uh, what r, well, I guess maybe you can't, I'm not sure at this point, but uh, we should name some things. So phi is gonna be called the argument of z or called an argument of z because like we talked about earlier, if you add an, a multi, an even multiple of pi up there to phi, then that's a good argument too. You land at the same point. And so we'll talk about how to make distinctions. You know, if I tell you, here are the arguments I want to consider. Sometimes they get special names. And what are some notes about this though? All right, so there's my first note. What is r? r is just the distance from the origin to my complex number. And uh, of course, that's the same thing as the absolute value of my complex number. So R, that radius, really is just the absolute value of your complex number. Uh, the next part is what I was just saying a moment ago. Uh, if phi is an argument, then phi plus 2k pi is a good argument as well for any integer. And uh, maybe the last thing, you know, what if R is one, then you just have Z is E to the I phi. And I just want everybody to be comfortable with that that is just another way to talk about the unit circle. So the unit circle really has this equation Z equals E to the I phi. And of course the radius of the unit circle is one. And that's all I'm saying to you with this last equation at the bottom. Let me just give you a little picture over here to the side, just to make sure we're all crystal clear. I drew my unit circle just to give you some values. So e to the i zero, that should just be one, right? e to the zero is one, even if there's an i there. So that's the complex number one plus zero i. Uh, e to the i pi over two, right? Pi over two tells me, and how, how are you thinking about this again? You know, I always think about starting from the x-axis and I'm gonna rotate pi over two units this way, and that's a right angle. So I land at this point, uh, zero plus one I. So again, when I'm here, thinking about this as being zero plus one I, that's what this one, that one is that placeholder one right there. Anyway, what if you were going to uh, rotate some more? What if you rotated pi units? So now you're over here, and that would be minus one plus zero I if you're thinking about that point. But anyway, that's e to the I pi. And uh, right there, that's like a YouTube video on its own. If you watch something like number file, uh, one of Euler's crazy equations, minus one is e to the i pi. So it throws like all of our goofy symbols into one beautiful little equation how they relate to each other. So you could just see that right there in the geometry. So that's pretty nifty. Well, I gotta push on do a bunch of time zones instead. Hold on, close your eyes, pretend you can't see this. Anyway, and then the last one I wrote down there, uh, this number e to the i three pi over two, that just says go around three pi over two radians and you're down here. And of course that's zero minus one i, in other words, negative i. All right, so then just trying to drive the point home that this is really the equation for the unit circle and there it is. And that's how it works for some particular values of phi. Let's look at some properties of complex numbers in polar form. And so what if you had two complex numbers in polar form, z1 and z2, whose you know, radius and argument also have corresponding subscripts of one and two, respectively. How do I multiply them together? And uh, how you multiply them together, you just multiply the, rate, the uh, absolute values. So you multiply the radii, so we say that, r1 times r2. And then of course you just add up the arguments up there in the exponent. So we're just using normal exponent rules. That's pretty nice. Same thing for when you divide, as long as you know, you make sure you're not dividing by zero because nobody can divide by zero. Z1 divided by Z2, we just need to 
divide r1 and r2, and then I just subtract. I just subtract the arguments up here. And again, that's just exponent rules. That's how you would do it anyway when you divide two things with the same base, you subtract their exponents. Uh, number three, what is the modulus of a complex number in polar form? All you need to do is just change the sign up there in the exponent. So change the sign of the argument. And so that is pretty easy to take moduli, or uh, sorry, modulus again, goodness, the conjugate. No one yelled at me though. It's because you can't yell at me because it's a YouTube video and I just won't read the comments. So the conjugate of complex number, you just need to change the sign on the argument up there in the exponent when it's in polar form. All right, let's do an example. I wanna find the polar form of one plus i, so it's given to me in rectangular form. And I'm also told though, you know, maybe there's lots of polar forms, but give me the one whose argument is between negative pi and pi. So let's look, our complex number we're given, one plus i, has real part one, an imaginary part one. I need to compute r. Remember, that's just the absolute value of this complex number. And that should be one squared plus one squared, which is the square root of two. Next thing I need to do is figure out what phi is. Phi is like my angle. And I know that tangent of phi should be y over x. So that's one over one. And so tangent of phi is one. And maybe you get on your calculator and you compute arctan of one or inverse tangent, whatever you want to say. And your, your calculator probably says pi over four. I'm warning you though, there's lots of different answers for phi. And so it's actually pi over four plus k pi. I know that I'm in quadrant one though. And, and so and what I also want is my phi to be between minus pi and pi. So if I take a look at my picture here, what I'm saying to you is when you take arctangent of one, there's really two answers that work. You know, when you take y over x. When I take y over x, I get one in either of these two points here. This would be positive one over positive one. This one would be negative one over negative one. My point is they both work. And what is this plus k pi business about that I have over here to the side? I'm saying it's always gonna be, you know, a point I'm saying if I went around uh, pi units this way, that takes me to here. If I went pi units back this way, it takes me to here, right? So that's what we're saying. We're always gonna be on one side of this line whenever I take arctangent. And so they're, they're, you always have to be careful about where does your point actually live? And my point one plus i really lives in quadrant one. That's how I know that I don't care about this one down here. So again, in a nutshell, when you take arctangent, just be careful. Think about which one of these points that you want and what k should be. So in our case, I'm pretty sure k should be zero because if you let me get rid of this stuff, k should be zero because I just wanna be at this point right here. I don't need to add anything to pi over four. Pi over four puts me at that yellow point right there. So we're good. So k is zero. And so that tells me that phi should just be pi over four. And so in a nutshell, or not in a nutshell, in conclusion is what I meant to say, one plus i in rectangular form, it has polar form square root of two, times e to the i pi over 4.